Welcome to Model Steam Engine's Top Tip Time, Part 64. Recently I've made a couple of videos about buying and selling model steam engines, and this is a case in point. This particular engine was bought by a friend of mine quite a few years ago. I collected the engine from a seller in Manchester, and I even phoned him and said, don't buy this engine, it's terrible, but he did. I'll be featuring this engine in another top tip time because I have to do some serious work to the cylinder. As usual for the top tip time series, these are selected clips from videos where I show quite important parts of a rebuild. If you wish to see the rebuilding of this engine in greater detail, please watch the full series, it contains a lot more information, and the series is called Repairing and Rebuilding a Very Large Horizontal Model Steam Engine. Making a start. Sometimes it's difficult, you don't really know where to start. I'll start with running this engine and you can see how bad it is. The flywheel is not exactly spinning where it's supposed to spin, it's wobbling all over the place. This is mainly due to the crankshaft being bent and the flywheel itself is not really a tight fit on the shaft to start with. Here's a comparison with the Stuart Models number 10, so you can see this really is quite a large steam engine. The first thing I'm worried about is this nasty black stuff that's coming out of the exhaust and also the way that the main bearings are mounted to the bed casting. One of them actually moves as it's running. The worst part of it though is the bent crankshaft. This is a three quarter inch diameter crankshaft and it's bent in a place that makes it quite difficult to straighten. This is a very old engine and the paintwork's not in good condition either. But once I've removed all the mechanical parts, the paintwork will be easy to fix. That's the least of my worries. Look at the play on the valve spindle. And look at the play on the clevis to the valve spindle. This is held on just with a bolt, which is no good at all. With the engine running on compressed air, you can see that one of the mountings onto the bed plate moves around as the engine's running. These are slot headed screws that have been tightened onto the cast iron bed plate and then filled over. So I'm going to dig out all the filler, remove the screws and replace where necessary. The main crankshaft is built up as you can see here, so it should be quite easy to disassemble it. I can't really decide whether I should make a complete new crankshaft from scratch or repair this one. I'll think about that while I'm looking at this. I'm removing the taper pin from the crosshead that secures the piston rod. Be careful if you do this. Always keep the hammer square to the work, tap it gently and then finish it off with a piece of brass rod. The crosshead is already marked from somebody previously doing this. To make it easy to move this engine around, because it really is very heavy, I'm going to remove the flywheel. Here I'm tapping out the key from the keyway using a piece of brass rod. This flywheel is very heavy, 13 and a half inches in diameter, made from very thick cast iron. I'll try not to drop it on the floor, that would be a disaster. Before continuing, it's a good idea to clean the parts, to get rid of all the accumulated grime and old oil. And it's time to remove the piston. But first I'll remove the connecting rod. Again, it's a taper pin that needs knocking out. Here you can see the hole where it's been. And it's a good idea to just check the fits, so you know which parts to work on before reassembly. This pin fits very well in the little end, but it's a bit of a rattle fit in the crosshead itself. Using a large pair of circlip pliers, I'm simply rotating the piston to free it from the crosshead. On some steam engines, the piston rod is threaded into the crosshead as well as being secured by a taper pin. You'll have to check this. On this engine though it wasn't and the piston came out very easily. And what a mess that was. These pistons are supposed to have graphited yarn wrapped round them. I don't know what this stuff is but it doesn't look much like graphited yarn to me. So I removed it very simply with a screwdriver. I don't know who worked in this engine before me but they need to stop doing it. From the look of it this engine is pretty well built. It's a nice old engine, so any work that I do on it will be to a good standard. If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Using my LED torch that I have lying about in the workshop with very flat batteries, it's time to look inside the cylinder bore. Thankfully the bore is okay. Crosshead is okay, not too much play, that slides nice and easily on the crosshead bars. This is a very solid engine, and the bed plate is cast iron but the main supports for the crankshaft are pieces of machined aluminium that bolt onto the cast iron. But they're only bolted onto the cast iron bed plate with countersunk slot head bolts. This is not a good system really. 
here you see me removing one of them to have a look at the thread. This engine has a governor fitted. It doesn't actually govern anything, but it's quite well made and it looks good. It's only held to the engine with one extended cylinder bolt, so it's quite easy to remove. Just remove the bolt and the whole assembly is in your hand. Yes, it is a very well made item. It just needs a good clean. Here you see the engine minus the guide bars. The next thing to do is to remove the cylinder itself, but before that I'm going to give the engine a wipe down. I'm using a cloth with some white spirit, which will remove most of the surplus oil and black stuff. The cylinder is held to the bed plate with four Allen type bolts, and these are easily removed from underneath the bed plate. Initially I thought, shall I make a new crankshaft, then I thought, well no, most of it's okay. So what I thought it would do, is keep the shaft a full three quarters of an inch diameter at the flywheel end. This makes for a much stronger crankshaft. This is a built up crankshaft, assembled from different components. So all I had to do was drill out the cross pin, and then heat up the crankshaft slightly with the blow lamp. This allowed me to withdraw the bent part of the shaft, as the heat destroys the Loctite's bond. Then I machined a new shaft using my collet chuck, which is very accurate. Then to keep everything in alignment, the whole thing was re-Loctited together in the lathe. Quite simple really. After the Loctite 603 had set, I then re-drilled the crank web and fitted a quarter inch pin. And after this, I machined the keyway in the shaft using my milling machine. The crankshaft is now fully rebuilt and the bearings are fitted to it. Far better than this, this was how the old crankshaft used to spin. And you can see it was very bent. Now I've replaced that side of it, the crankshaft is no longer bent, and it spins beautifully as you can see here. Unfortunately this large flywheel, which is 13.5 inches in diameter, has a hole in the centre that's a little bit too big for a 3 quarters of an inch shaft. It's only a tiny amount too big, not really enough to shim, so what I'm going to do is paint the inside of the centre boss, then it will be a good fit on the crankshaft, and the key will hold it in position. It's very good to see this crankshaft spinning as it should do. The masking tape around the crank pin is just to protect it from any damage should I drop something on it. As you can see, the flywheel is quite true now. It doesn't look it too much on this shot, but you should have seen it before. My lathe has a 6 inch centre height, and unfortunately this flywheel is 13 and a half inches in diameter, so it will not fit in the lathe. What I'm going to have to do is run the engine on compressed air, and then turn down the outer edge of the flywheel using sandpaper or a file or something. More on this later. I replaced the bolts that hold the crankshaft support in place, and it's looking good now. And that is it for this episode of Top Tip Time. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.